Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan, this is Alan, and we're gonna do a mouse review for you. More of a mouse overview, maybe more of a mouse demonstration, uh, if you will. This, a mouse benchmark. Uh, uh, sure, we'll go with that, we can, yeah. we can call it this. Today we're looking at the Logitech G. This is the G402 Hyperion Fury mouse. And that's a fancy name it is. for a mouse. Uh, we're looking at a $59 mouse, so fairly reasonably priced, actually, yeah, uh, like for a price. gaming mouse. Uh, if you look at specifications on the box, I mean, you're looking at um, you know, standard kind of optical sensor, mm -hmm. at least at first. Uh, it's got up to 1,000 hertz polling rate on the USB. It's typical for uh, those, It's yeah. very lightweight. It's got programmable buttons. It's got, like, multiple DPI mm -hmm. uh, settings that you can go through. Uh, it's got the DPI, what do they call it, the DPI um, shift which allows you to use like a thumb button to hold it down and drop to a lower mm -hmm. DPI that you can or, set or in software. Higher or higher, yeah. yeah. Um, and let go of it and it returns back to the original one. Yeah. Good for like if you are playing a first person game and you're like you zoom in to snipe somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you hold down that DPI shift button so that you can Or if you're doing like accurate. a real time strategy that's a, like a one that pans like it's yeah. panning smoothly with the mouse. Yeah. Like Defense Grid, I think, does that or something. Okay. Right. So you can just hold that button and like go really quick. Yeah. Right. That'd be kind of cool. So the, the G402 kind of sits in the middle of their lineup, mm -hmm. right? They have a 700 series, they have a 600 series, they have a 500 series, they have a 4, a 3, and a 2. Um, and, uh, you know, you, your, your features kind of vary as you go up and down the series, right? You know, the higher end models have the wireless options, have more programmable buttons, maybe more fancy lights. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, this, you know, we were looking at this just in terms of it being a regular mouse uh, doesn't have like the ability to do a free wheel, free wheel scroll with the... Yeah, it doesn't have the little button you hit that unlocks it. Right. And it's like a weighted right. it's wheel. All, it's always got the click form to yeah. it. But what, is re what really makes this mouse interesting is um, this, this new sensor combination that they're using, right? Mm -hmm. So an optical sensor is what most mice are using today. And it's essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, any of this, taking a picture as you move the mouse across a surface. And then it's really comparing quickly. those pictures to each other mm -hmm. to see how much did I move in that span of time. And that's mm -hmm. how it judges your speed, your acceleration, and your X, Y coordinates at any given time. Yep, but it can only do that so quickly. Right. Yeah. So the issue is, uh, as Logitech has described it to us, is that at some point, an optical sensor fails. Mm -hmm. It's taking pictures only at, you know, I guess, up to 1,000 times a second, right, yep. if that's its maximum uh, polling resolution, or polling rate, rather. And, and at some point, if you're moving the mouse really fast, mm -hmm. it kind of lose tracks, loses track of where it is. Yeah, I can't tell from picture to picture, like, which way it went. Right. It doesn't yeah. know, maybe I went up, maybe I went down, maybe I went left. Yep. It's not sure. So the, the optical sensor fails, and what that means is either it, the, the cursor just stops, or your movement in the game might, just stops. It might kind of bounce around, or... You could look up at the sky, as yeah. they were saying, or you could look in any other kind of direction. Yep. So it fails, and that's bad. It's bad for gamers. It's uh, obviously not what you want with a mouse. Mm -hmm. So uh, Logitech's solution to this is a feature they call the Fusion Engine, which is a fancy name for uh, adding in a 32-bit ARM processor mm -hmm. that communicates with an accelerometer and a gyro. It's pretty cool. So essentially what happens is once the op if you're moving the mouse very fast, mm -hmm. the optical sensor fails, it switches over to taking sensor readings from the accelerometer and gyro. Now, what's interesting about that is it can measure much, much higher speeds. Yeah, it's not as accurate. Probably less accurate, Yeah, uh, even at high speeds. It's definitely less accurate at slow speeds. That's why it's not only using gyroscope sure. and accelerometer. Well, I mean, it's going, it's, it's, a, it's like a acceleration versus a absolute, right? Like right. The pictures are absolute. Sure. You know you moved this far, Yeah. right? But then when you switch over to the accelerometer, you'll know if the mouse is still going the same speed, it'll just keep moving the cursor, Right. you know, until it slows down enough, back enough. And then it will, so once it slows down enough again, the optical sensor becomes, comes back, back into back play, yeah. and it becomes, you know, it's doing its, its standard picture taking and, and yeah. information there. So, um, that's obviously the, the killer feature for this. They call this the world's fastest gaming mouse. They can measure up to 500 IPS, actually, I think they can, inches they go little, which is inches per second, 500 inches per second, which is 28.4 miles per hour. Yeah, I don't think people are actually getting that fast. Probably right? not. We're going to test that here. That's why we have this giant, what mouse pad am I looking at here, Alan? This so this is the, is the, uh, the Ripper XXL. Okay, and how long is this? 36 inches? 36 inches by 18 inches. 36 by 18. Clearly, it's taking up the majority of my workspace here. The idea for this is you have your keyboard here on it. 
and sure. you have a big mousing surface. But, but for us, there are gamers mm. that run in low DPI, right? And they have relatively large mice, right? We're trying to do extreme test right. here, but like, so. So we'll, we'll talk about like what the use case is it for after the demonstration, but um, inside the Logitech software, which we have brought up here already, um, is you know the ability to, to test some of these things. So first we'll show, you know, the Logitech gaming software is pretty good. You can set uh, uh, profiles, either in onboard memory or, you know, to launch based on the game detection. Um, you can, you know, change all of these buttons and what they do. You can change your available DPI settings. You can go up to five, it defaults with four. Change your polling rate, mm -hmm. reporting rate. How there. does the button, like, for the, what's the name of that button? Uh, just like the DPI shift Yeah, button. DPI shift, like how does that work in that interface? So you see like the orange, that's what it would come down to. Oh, okay, right. and you can move that wherever yes. you want. It. Yeah, you can move the orange to wherever you want, and that will kind of adjust it. That's cool. Um, we have the ability here to adjust the lights. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe if you look at the overhead camera, you can see the, the overhead. We, we have a it. lit up G here. It pulses. It's, it's they call it breathing. That's breathing. It's not pulsing. It's called breathing. Okay. Uh, and also, you can adjust like uh, the lights as you shift DPI. You can see those a little bit there. Yeah. Whether or not they stay on or go away. On older after. Logitech mice, they were just on all the time. Yeah. So that defaults to like a timeout, like after a few I seconds. could see it being annoying if it was on all the time, if it were on top, like yeah. where you saw it all the time, but it's on the side, so it would be yeah, less useful. But either way, you get the option there, yeah. so it's pretty nice. But this is the part of the software that we really like. Uh, this is uh, a speedometer, which we're always big fans of speedometers here. On the left, you see optical sensor only. On the right, you see optical sensor with fusion engine, and you can kind of shift it here back and forth. And probably you can actually do, let's do like Optical only first. I yeah, would think. switch yeah. between IPS and meters per second, which we'll do that. Right. So. Well, you want IPS definitely. So the idea here is we're going to take this mouse and we're going to move it as fast as I hu as I humanly well, you can. can. Ramp up, kind of like. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you look if you look at the software, you can see I'm moving it around. We're somewhere in the one to six IPS inches per second, and. You're barely moving it. And I'm barely moving the mouse. If you look at the mouse pad, like we're we're not moving it. If I move it a little bit faster. You can see now our software is reading, you know, 30, 33, and that 37 is always keeping the highest one, right? So if I move a little bit faster, I can get up to 67, uh, move a little faster, and get up to 95. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's easy to see how you could quickly get that number up, right? Especially if you're using a, a larger mousing surface. Yeah. And I don't know actually what DPI I'm on here, but it doesn't really matter. For and, if you're, and if you're in like, you know, first person shooter, you got to do like a 180, someone shooting you from behind or something. Yep. You really need to like just... That's kind of the use right? case, right? Is that yeah. you're a gamer, uh, and in particular, what they, th what they think is uh, people that use low DPI. Right. Right. And they, based they on what Logitech is saying... They have to move the mouse further. Low get, DPI is right? kind of like the preferred case for real serious gamers. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to because of that, you have to use a lot of physical space. Right. Right. And sometimes if you want to turn around, then you got to get to that physical space quickly. Yeah. Right. So that's why you get this whole idea of can we accelerate up to a certain speed. Mm -hmm. So because we do dumb things here, we wanted to see how fast can we actually get this mouse to work. Right. So if we look at the software So how here, fast can you actually, well, so you're at 95 and you did that with kind of like you weren't really trying. Well, it wasn't really trying it. hard. Right. So that was like you can hit 95 reasonably, like you could yep. probably assume that just normal gaming, you might actually hit like 95. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So how much press 95 can you go, though, with in the, that With the optical that mode. sensor yeah. only. Let's see, if I... Like, if you're really uh, trying might to... Watch that box, I might okay. knock it off the table. Oh, yeah. Okay, so 95 was so, still the max. So you were going way faster just then... Let's clear it and see. ...than you did before, right? So 105, 115, 131... So we're... we're this is as fast as we can get but, the mouse to but, register. But here's here. here's an important point though. You're moving that at least twice as fast across the pad yeah. as you as you did to get 95 to read earlier. Like you just kind of like moved your arm, not really trying. So you're saying we should have seen 190. You, you, and instead you we're getting up to like 130. Yeah, you should probably see much higher than yeah. 130, right? So what's interesting about that is now if we enable the fusion engine, this is uh, re-enabling the ability for the software and the mouse to switch over to the accelerometer. Right. And gyroscope, right? And so you can see we can move this and it works the same way. Uh, you know, we could slide it back and forth like that and we're getting up there. But if okay. you really, let's say, let's, let's, let's say I'm, I'm emulating just actually playing here and I just kind of move my hand across. I hit 102. Okay. Right? Oh. 29. And you see those red, oh, so now you the red higher. goes to blue. Okay. Um, that we're already, yeah, we're already at the level of the, what we did without the fusion engine. So let's, let's 
do dumb something dumb here. Let's. Wow. 256. I think what was my record before 270? I think the fastest I've ever hit. I think is it's because this. I think it might be because it, the fusion is able to kick. You were trying this at your desk and weren't able to get that right. high. So on a standard kind of a standard size is actually a Corsair MM400. So it's a big yeah. mouse pad. Yeah. Um, the problem is you run out of space on that. Right. You need a lot of space to accelerate to get to that. To get to such a high value. Clearly, yeah. okay, so one, I am not a professional gamer. Clearly, if you've watched <laughs> any, of our, any of our game streams. Two, this is kind of excessive. an excessive amount of space that even a professional gamer would be using. Clearly, they ha like, I guess you could just have like one of those hand keyboards here, and you could use this whole surface for mousing. It seems unlikely. You'd be a serious gamer right it there. It would seem That'd unlikely. And even at the lowest DPI, I'd be curious if you move from here to here, how many 360s are you doing, right? How low does DPI have to be for you to get a 180 out of that? Yeah. That's really low. Right. That's really right. low. But, I mean, people that are doing nothing but gaming, mm -hmm. right? They could probably get the mouse to 250 within yeah. probably half the space. Right? That I am? Oh, clearly. You know, because they probably have, like, extra muscles in this part it's of just arm, all, it's and, you all, know, it's, and, it's, it's a bunch of muscle memory stuff, right? Yeah. So if we... Let's, let's see if I can, let's, let's, let's do this again. You're going to try even higher? I'm going to try to do 256. Or I'm just going to shield myself? Yeah, please watch yourself. Okay. 269. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to start <laughs> melting the mouse oh, man. pad now. I did, I did, we did start to wear off some of, wear some of the Teflon. Yeah. And like I actually burnt my finger, move it like my finger was actually touching the mouse pad at some point. Too much friction. But, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is, and yeah, I'm accidentally hitting buttons and stuff as well. 275, new record, right. new record. So, like, so, I mean, a gamer might hit something like that in half that space, because you're not, it's not like you went from one corner to the other corner. I mean, you really only went, like, about halfway across the pad. Like, yeah, the maybe a little second. bit more, before, right. especially before you start slowing down again, because I'm, right. I'm hitting my top speed somewhere around here, and I've got to decelerate so I don't hit you in the chest with the mouse. But I think the real key here is that around 100, like, they say in documentation that 120 is kind of the typical cutoff point. Right. But in our testing, the cutoff point varies depending on how quickly you're accelerating right, as right, well. Right. So uh, I think there's some kind of handoff there, and like this, this, the optical sensor is basically able to kind of feed that in the engine and just be like, well, I'm, I'm not really sure where I'm going anymore. Right. And it, it might kick in earlier. It right? could, yeah. So instead, whereas without that type of a mouse, like if you just had the regular you know, prior generation mouse with only optical, it might have caused it to skip somewhere else onto the screen. Yeah. Right? And so it's not like you have to be going 250 inches per second or some no. crazy, you know, in order for this to work, I right. guess, right? Right, so if you, look, if you look here, like if I'm just sitting here and I'm, I, I try to be, let's try to contain my usage space of this pad yeah. a little bit. There, you just hit 145. Right, and you can see kind of where right. that kick-in point yeah. is, is as well. So that's 50% so higher. There's use for it. Yeah, you're already 50% higher than we were able to get really with kind yeah. of like the optical. And, and you, still need, you still need to be like, that's still very fast, very quick movement. It is. And you're asking that person to be accurate in that point of time, right? The goal is you want to be able to turn around and shoot that person accurately. You still need to be at least on the same horizon. You need to be looking, once not you've looking done up. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's really cool technology. Um, and again, it's a fifty nine dollar mouse. It's, uh, not, it's, it's, it's a G four hundred two. It's called the Hyperion yeah. Hyperion Fury. Uh, it's called the Fusion, and is the Fusion Engine is the technology in there. Uh, and they, they have some videos on their on their YouTube channel that show like they built a machine that can actually test it up to five hundred. And it's like this huge mechanical it looks arm like a, that swings across. Looks like across. a flat trebuchet. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, and so is this, is uh, we kind of I kind of asked them optical about optical or laser. It's optical. Okay, so regular optical because I think you can get higher. I think you can actually get higher like DPI. Oh, okay. Or like refresh or pulling or whatever you want to call it, like out of the original tech. Right? Sure. Um, so they use that. Laser just allows you to use it on more surfaces, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But so that so there's it's decent yeah. optical. It's kind of interesting right? that yeah no and, and like even if you're not mousing at that speed, which yeah. clearly you're not the majority of the time. Like I've been using this mouse for the last couple of days on, on my primary machine just. Try, just regular just using use. it, like yeah. writing and browsing, and, and it's, it's a great mouse. Like it just works. It's very light, um, yeah. and and it I like I, I, I think like the way the wheel feels. I it, think it's, it's a G6 that I have on my desk, mm -hmm. just an older one, and it feels almost identical. Just mm -hmm. just using just normal kind of desktop, yeah. right? But that key, I think, is where, you know, 
you try to do a 180 in the game. I asked them, you know, will this technology, will this fusion engine idea of bringing a, a gyro and an accelerometer to mice come to other lines? And they said, maybe. It really depends on what the reception is of this, right? This hmm. is kind of, they put it in the, in the middle price point trying to see how many people would be interested in buying it, right? $60 is a really easy purchase for a mouse, I think. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, useful for other gaming. It has, you know, lots of, of buttons that you can, you can tweak and, and move around. You know, you've got two thumb buttons over here. You've got your DPI buttons over here, DPI shift. So uh, there's a lot, I think there's a lot to like about it. Yeah. Even despite that fact. But even if, you know, I think it's pretty cool to they, just they show of off the, and run like this. How fast can you move your mouse? They got rid of the weight cartridge thing. There's no more weights on yeah, it. No more. That. I think that's like a higher end, again, like maybe you get into 7, 6, 500 series stuff. Right. You get into more of that. It's it's not available in wireless. It's wired only, yeah. um, which kind of makes sense, I guess, as well. So it, I, I really like the mouse. Uh, it, it, I think it's shipping later in August, mm -hmm. just just not, not too long from now. Um, I think it's a tricky thing to figure out what the uptake is specifically like yeah. because of that engine, though. Like, like you know... I'm sure it's, it's going tough. to help people. Yeah, if you if you listen to their their videos, they basically say if the optical sensor loses, if it breaks down and it fails, it's yeah. only really doing it for like a tenth of a second, right? At the most, right? But that tenth of a second is important if you happen to be in the middle of one of those 180 degree spins, yeah, right? And that's obviously when it would kick in and when it would be, you know, it would actually help create it would, it an would accurate still, tracking. The mouse would still roughly know where it was going yeah. during that tenth of a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't go blind. Plus, hey, you know, uh, if you're just bored and you want to challenge your friends <laughs> in the fastest mousing contests, you could buy this mouse and do that, right? So you could mm, see 267. 267. That was on the yeah, first yeah. try, right? 277. I feel like I should move. You, you are going to get hit eventually. I feel, I feel like, yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, Logitech G402 Hyperion Fury uh, mouse. You can go to PCPro.com. We have some other pictures and some more descriptions along with it, but I feel like we covered pretty much everything here in this video. Yep. Uh, 69 or $59. Uh, if you're going to try to utilize it for that, maybe you get a bigger mousing surface than you're used <laughs> to having as well. Uh, Big, like, like the Ripper XXL for some reason. Uh, but thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time.